For professional angler Greg Hackney, fishing around cypress trees has paid big dividends over the years. He knows that submerged root systems from cypress trees serve as prime territory for largemouth bass. In this segment of Louisiana Sportsman TV, Hackney breaks down his approach to locating fish around cypress trees. Basically, you know, we, we're in the basin and, uh, you know, the majority of the fish are post-spawn and, you know, I came over in a group of trees and I probably flipped, you know, 20 or 25 and didn't get a bite and it's hot, humid, cloudy. It's just really perfect fishing weather. And I just felt, got the feeling, I was like, man, those fish probably, you know, I just feel like they are probably not that tight to the cover right now just because of the condition. And I just picked up that frog, that's just a Strike King popping perch. And I mean. <laughs> One of Hackney's favorite baits for fishing around cypress trees is a topwater frog. It offers great versatility and allows him to cover a lot of water. Well, you know, especially in the situation we got here, we got some off-colored water around these cypress trees. We got dark conditions. And that frog just, you know, it looks like something that fell out of that cypress tree. Whether it be a baby bird, it could be a bluegill flopping around on top, a frog. I mean, you know, typically fish that live around cypress trees, they're opportunists. I mean, when it really comes down to it, they don't really pick and choose. They eat whatever's the easiest. And it's just something about that frog, you know, walking around those trees. Now there are situations where if the water was clear, there might be other topwater baits that do a better job, but I like it because you can throw braid. It fishes just like a regular topwater bait. I can skip it in under those limbs. I mean, I can throw it in the edge of those lilies. I mean, you never have to worry about. You can do, you can, it just basically does what a traditional topwater bait does, but it'll do it in any kind of cover. And then I got, you know, a strong rod, a strong line, and I can, you know, I can get on them. There's no playing with them. Where if I was throwing like a traditional popper with treble hooks around these trees, you know, then you gotta fight with the fish and be easy. And then those hooks would be hanging that Spanish moss or in that grass or around that tree. And that frog is just a weedless version of that. I can fish it fast, I can fish it slow. I mean, it's just, like I said, I can throw it out there in the edge of those lilies, uh, fish it across a solid grass mat. But it just shows those fish something different around those trees. He didn't even give me a chance, Jared, to work my little old bug around before he liked it. Oh, he's peeing on me. He must be excited. With many obstructions to cast around, fishing cypress trees can be a challenge. Hackney has some good tips on what rod and reel setup to use for fishing a frog. But you know, this is a, you know, the rod I'm fishing it on, Hack Attack, frog rod, frog swim jig rod. It's a 7.2, medium heavy. It's just perfect for skipping. Handle's not too long on it, because that's the other thing. Like fishing around these trees, you, you don't want too much rod. You want just a perfect rod to, to skip that frog in under those, uh, you know, skip it in under those limbs, but you gotta have enough rod to get them out, because, you know, that fish go around those cypress knees or, what are else is around the tree. And typically for me on a frog, a 65 pound gamma torque braid, I never throw lighter than 65. And it's not because I'm worried about breaking off, you just don't have to. That line, that 65 floats good on top, it never pulls down, so it won't pull down the nose of that frog. And the other deal is I can throw that frog all day and not have to retie. I mean, it just makes me efficient. While the frog didn't produce any more bites, Greg was able to rely on some of his other favorite baits to catch a few more fish in the cypress trees. You know, so basically today, we never really found a concentration of fish fishing cypress trees. We just kind of catch one here and one there. There really wasn't anything on the outside trees. They all seemed to be on the inside trees and actually some of the shallower trees seemed to be the deal. I, I still feel like these are fish that were lingering around from the spawn. Even though I don't think they were spawning, I just think they were male fish that are still, you know, they're still hanging out there. They could have been garden fry, I didn't see. You know, lure-wise, I got bit about the same on all three. You know, I pitched the trees with a uh, striking rage bug. That's black neon. And I will tell you that the watercolor in the basin and just in our area in general, that is by far one of my favorite colors, black neon. 
And has anybody ever looked at a sack of crawfish in this part of the country? How many of them are black and red? Just saying. It's just hard to beat that. And you can kind of swim this thing around the trees. I could pitch it in there, let it hit the bottom, and then just kind of and swim it back because the legs. When you don't know where they are, it's a good choice because you can cover a lot of water with it. You got a flipping bait, plus you got a bait you can swim. Uh, rod and reel, Team Lou's Custom Pro Reel, eight three to one, a 50, 50 pound uh, Gamma Torque braid, a 3 16 ounce slip sinker, a 7 3 uh, special jig, Hack Attack Lou's rod. Uh, and uh, the other deal about these rods, these rods were tailor-made to fish around these cypress trees. I had, I had Lou's build my rods to target fish with, because that's what I like to do. I do more damage fishing wood, grass, weeds, so these rods were built for that. They handle good, they're light for working around all these trees. From there, I threw a hack, that's a 3 8 ounce hack attack select spinner bait, uh, white with a turtle blade. The water's pretty dirty, that gives me a little thump but I basically was using a spinner bait that looked like the shad. I mean, there are a lot of little shad around these trees. We've seen them all day long. I caught about, had about the same number of bites on a spinner bait as I did the rage bug. Rod wise, this is a 6'8 spinner bait buzz bait rod. It's just perfect. You watch me just roll cast. Cause the deal, a lot of times when you're coming down through those trees like that, I'm making four and five foot cast, not 40 and 50 foot cast. This is target fishing. And when I and a, a lot of times an angle doesn't open up on that cypress tree till I get to it. So I need a rod that I can make short accurate casts with and repetitive. I can work every corner. Cause if you look how these trees are made, they got all types of indentations. And that's where all my bites came from today, regardless of the lure. It was always in that indentation. So those indentations are all the way around the tree. So I'm just making short casts. Cause I'm keeping that bait in the strike zone. So it, it's again, the rod is very important being able to make accurate casts. The main thing about when fishing trees, when you get around some that you think have fish on them, keep an open mind. Don't just throw one lure. Mix it up a little bit. Try to figure out what that bass wants the best. Join us here next time on Sportsman TV.